Hello everyone, if you are new to DBT or you are an experienced DBT user, today's episode is a must watch for you. In today's video, we are going to be diving into a useful and powerful feature in DBT that helps you make your development workflows even smoother and that is the defer command. In this video, we are going to be looking at what the defer command is, why you should care about it and how it really works. This video is part of our A to Z series of DBT and today we are in letter D which is the defer command. If this is your first time, thanks so much for stopping by your returning viewer. Thanks so much, I'm really excited to have you here. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and um, like and share as well and also hit the notification bell so you can notify once a new video drops in. Alright, so let's jump into the defer command. Imagine you're working on a complex DBT project with hundreds and thousands of models and you want to make a change to one model and then um, when you want to test that change on that model you have to run upstream dependencies for that model every time this is where dbt defer comes in the dbt defer lets you use results from previous runs so that you don't have to recompute everything every time when you're working in development you see how this makes things easier it's like telling dbt hey just use the previous results we have in production. I only want to test the changes on my model. So you have hundreds thousands of models. You made one change on the model downstream and you want to test that change. So instead of running all option dependencies for that model, every time you want to reconfirm your testing, you could just defer for DBT to reference existing production models. So that's where you only have to just run or test the changes you have made on your model. This in a lot of ways helps you save time, compute, compute resources as well because you don't have to build those models all over again in development when you can just reference your production um, model that exists in production already. DBT powers this by using the manifest in production and then resolves um, the ref function to use the manifest coming from um, production run. Now, in case you're not sure what manifests and artifacts are all about, you can check our first video in our A to C series of artifacts in the link above and link below as well. So when do you use defer? You use defer when you're collaborating with teams. So let's say you have lots of developers working on a particular project and um, you are new on the project and um, the project has so many models and you want to make a change to one um, to one model. Typically your schema will be empty because you don't have you never run that model those that have that project on your schema like your own development schema so you would have to run everything so imagine it takes a few minutes like you're taking time and compute instead you could just defer to use production artifacts and then everybody is able to work easily faster and ensure that um, the test the whatever they are doing works fine right another use case for um defer is in your um ci cd pipeline in our previous video when we talked about CI/CD, we saw how DBT Cloud uses defer in the CI/CD workflow. So it defers to previous last successful production run to see what is modified and then runs that to your CI checks to see that everything was as expected before you merge that to production. And then if you're testing new features, so the defer allows you to test your new features, your new transformation logic with existing stable artifacts, right, in production. That way you're sure that whatever changes you're making would work as expected in production when it goes to production data as the case may be. Alright, so how do you use dbt defer? You can use defer in your dbt core or dbt cloud. On this video, I'm going to show us a demonstration of how we use this in dbt cloud. But then on dbt core, you have to write your full your command in full. dbt run or dbt build whatever models you're selecting and then you add your defer flag which tells dbt hey you want to defer um, the models reference the, the, the models reference upstream in this model to existing manifest in production or development or staging wherever you are interested in deferring that to and then you add your state flag so you're doing dbt build select whatever models you're selecting you add your defer flag and then you add your state flag and also include the parts to the artifact so whatever on, on your core so you have that part saved in your targets folder for example or you want to defer to production uh, manifest maybe you save that on an s3 bucket or something you add the parts to that and then dbt can resolve to use that part of manifest for that model run. So on DBT Cloud, I'm just going to switch over to my screen and show you what that looks like on DBT Cloud and then how you can use your defer flag for your development workflows. All right, so we're in DBT Cloud and this is a very simple project I had. So imagine I just created a math um, model here um, that depends on these three staging 
models so notice down here you see defer to staging production right so resolve all stream references using staging um, metadata environments is provided for this if a staging environment is provided for this project otherwise this production metadata so remember when you're setting up dvt cloud you have your environments development environment staging environment rather and um, production environment so i want to run this uh, I don't know why this is still rolling. Let me refresh this quickly. All right, so imagine I run this model here and um, it gives me an error that says runtime database error. Um, this model stage election candidate does not exist. So it's pulling it from my development environment, dbt underscore udv data, right? This model does not exist there. However, so like I said, the goal of this in development is you could reference upstream models to pick that artifact from already existing uh, metadata that exists either from production so if i defer this to staging or production and run again so dbt is going to um, resolve this rare function to pull from production and so we're now going to have data so you see so instead of coming down instead of building instead of running um dbt build select um plus what's the model name candidate fin summary instead of doing that so this way i'm telling the business to run all the upstream dependencies instead of doing this so when i have so many models to build i just defer to production and dbt pulls in every um upstream dependencies from what exists in production what are the benefits for this the benefits you get for this is speed safety and efficiency with dbt defer you can improve your development workflows your ci cd pipelines ensure that you are um, everybody is working meaningful in the team and you could save time and also save compute resources as well and there you have it dbt defer is demystified whether you are a solo developer or working in a large team with a large project, I think DBT Defer is going to help you to improve your development workflows and ensure that things are done efficiently and in speed. It helps you going to save time and save your computer resources as well. If you found this video really helpful, please like it to smash the subscribe button. Please do that right now. Hit the subscribe button. A lot of you come to the channel and watch the videos but you're not subscribed. So please subscribe right now. Watch, subscribe, hit the like button. The notification bell also notified once a new video drops in. And to meet again in the next video, happy modeling, keep building smarter. See you. Bye bye.